Good evening, friends. Um, I want to thank God so much because of the opportunity and time that he has given to us so that we can hear God's word and desire to grow in him even during this season. And today, just like we have been read to, our lesson today or encouragement will be coming from the book of Judges. But just uh, before we get to that book, uh, I know that our topic today is uh, with the king. And when you talk about with the king, that topic in itself is leaving us with uh, some uh, feeling to do. And so you can feel it the way that God is going to lead you in terms of your circumstance. I have given some few examples of how to feel with the king. And one of the things I will say is we are at home with the king or your morning with the king, or you are celebrating with the king, or involved in essential services, but together with the king. So whatever the situation that you are in now, please just fill in um, what situation that you are in, but the calling for this sermon is that we do it with the king. Now, as I was thinking about this topic, and I was thinking about what is happening in our context. One of the songs that came into my heart is the, is the, is the song uh, King of My Heart by Stephanie. And, and I just want to read for us some few um, words from this song. And this is what it says. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Who oh, he is my song. Now, friends, I know that these are exact words that you want to hear. These are exact words that I want to hear during this season. I want to hear that there is a mountain I can run to. I want to hear that there is a fountain that I can drink to, I can drink from, even when things seem to be very dry. I want to hear that there is a shadow where I can hide. I want to hear that there is a ransom for my imminent judgment. These are great words that I want to hear. And all these that I want to hear, I can hear them from the king. Now, the book of Judges which we've read is actually featuring events just after the death of Joshua together with some elders after that and then to the beginning of monarchy. And now, during these moments, the Israelites had experienced a lot of good things that the Lord God, their king, had done for them. Israel had conquered the promised land through the leadership of Joshua at this time. Many of the covenant promises God had made to their ancestors were actually fulfilled at this moment. You know, the, Lord, the Lord's land where Israel was to enter into rest at this point Actually, that land was under their feet. That means that they had conquered that bit. The only thing that remained for them was to occupy it, to displace the Canaanites, and to cleanse it from paganism. But something interesting or unfortunate is happening in their lives the moment they get into the promised land. And in chapter 2, and I will read some five verses in, 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 in Judges chapter 2, verse 10 to 15, this is what the word of God says. The Bible says in Judges chapter 2 from verse 10 to verse 15, after that a whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors. Another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the people around them. They aroused the Lord's anger because they forsook him and served Baal and the asteroids. In his anger against Israel, the Lord gave them into the hands of raiders who plundered them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, whom they were no longer able to resist. Whenever Israel went out to fight, the hand of the Lord was against them to defeat them. Just as he had sworn to them, they were in great distress. Now we are seeing a people that God has been their king, 
and has enabled them to go through the difficult situations of their lives. And now they are settled in the land that the Lord promised to them. But we are seeing a scenario where the Israelites have now forgotten about their king. They have forgotten about their God. You know, in, in Canaan, Israelites quickly forgot God who established them in the land. We are also seeing they lost sight of their unique identity as God's people, chosen and called to be his army and the royal citizen of his emerging kingdom. They settled down and attached themselves to the Canaanites' people, together with the Canaanites' morals, gods, and religious beliefs and practices. They even adapted to their lifestyle, including agriculture and social life. And they forgot about God completely. Now, because of this, they lost sight of God. They lost conviction of Yahweh as their king. And like we read in chapter 17, verse 6, the Bible says, just to read once again, because just one verse, in chapter 17, verse 6, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, In those days, Israel had no king, and so because they were not acknowledging the king of kings, everyone did as they saw fit in their eyes. Now, as a result of this, God took Israel into a circle of their lifestyle. And if you read the entire book of Judges, it's developed in a circle of almost six things that are happening to them. So the first thing is God will uh, put them into apostasy or, or they, they, will, they, will, they will deny who God is. They will, they will not acknowledge him. They will start worshipping other gods of the Canaanites. And then God will subject them into the hands of the people then, the Canaanites, the Sidonians, the Hivites, you know, those Philippians, uh, um, the, the Philistines who are there. God will actually subject them into their hands. God will subject them to the torture. They will be in bondage. They will be in bondage. And then when they will be in bondage, the Bible tells us that they will cry to that God. So God will, will subject them to bondage because of the apostasy. Then they will learn to cry to God. And when they cry to God, we will see that God will raise up a judge. And when God raises up a judge, God will deliver them and when God delivers them, God will give them peace. So they went round and round and round in their lifestyle because of disbelief and because they, dis they did not acknowledge God as the king. Now the author of the judges accused Israel of having rejected the kingship of the Lord again and again. And indeed the fundamental issue in judges is the lordship of God in Israel, especially Israel acknowledgement of and loyalty of his rule. In fact, at some point, the judge Gideon, Gideon will remind the Israelites in chapter 8, verse 23, in chapter 8, verse 23, he will remind the Israelites of their king, and this is what the Bible says. The Bible is saying, but Gideon told them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. They had to be reminded about the Lord, their God. They had to be reminded about Yahweh. They had to be reminded about their king whom they forgotten. And when they remembered that king, like I've told you, in chapter 2, verse 16, the Lord will raise up a judge. And the judge will lead them in battles. And in chapter 2, verse 18, chapter 3, verse 28 to 29, Chapter 4, verse 23, we see Israel is now in victory. And then when they had victory, they will have peace that surpasses human understanding. Now, peace or rest is our ultimate goal, friends, even at a time like this. If we let the king of our hearts be the mountain where we run, the fountain we drink from, the shadow where we hide, the ransom for our lives, if we let the king take control of our lives, even at a time like this, then our ultimate goal is peace and rest in him. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15, 
which he had will display at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the king of kings and the lord of lords. When we allow the king of kings and the lord of lords to take care of our lives, to take care of our families, to take care of our situations, if we allow him, then God is going to take us through even moments like this. I have a question for us. What will it look like to stop treating Jesus as simply a role model and start serving him as our sovereign king? To deny ourselves, take up our cross, and make serving Jesus our highest priority. How will life be if we stop now looking at Jesus only as a role model, but look at him as a king? Even in our context, even in our situation right now, what is the difference if you look at Jesus as a role model and you look at Jesus as the king? When I look at Jesus as the king, then I look at myself as a prince. I can still have the courage, the vigor, the strength to face tomorrow because I know my God is the king. I know that my God is the head of the kingdom. I know that my God is the one who manages the operation of the earth and the world when every other small king doesn't understand. My God who is the king understands. My friends, it is one thing to go through this season as difficult as it is. But it is disastrous to be in this season without the cushioning assurance of being with the king. It is difficult as you go through this season. But I want to propose to us, it is disastrous to go through this season without the king. It is disastrous to be at home and not going to work without the king. It is disastrous, friends, to go through all that we are going through, to lack, to get that letter of leave, to get that letter of termination, not to be, to, to be uncertain about tomorrow. If all these things happen to us without the king in our heart, then it is dangerous, it is disastrous. We need to know that in respective of all the things that we go through as a country and the world, that there is a king. His name is Yahweh, the king of kings and the lord of lords. Friends, don't forget the king. Let the king of your heart be the mountain where we run. Let the king of our hearts be the fountain where we drink from. Let the king of our hearts be the shadow where we hide. Let the king of our hearts be the ransom for the imminent judgment. The Israelites forgot the king. They started attaching themselves to the kings of the Canaanites. And so they ended up into apostasy and they ended up into bondage. They were tortured. They never saw victory. Then they cried to God, and I want to call upon all of us that if there is anything that you can ever do today is to cry to this God, whether you are at home, whether you are at work in essential services, wherever place you are, that we cry to this God. And when they cry to this God, our God is faithful, is just. Our God is, 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 is a good God. He raised up a judge, and the judge walked with them to victory. And when they had victory, the Bible tells us that they experienced an amazing peace. Chapter 3, verse 11, they experienced an amazing peace. Chapter 3, verse 30, they experienced an amazing peace. Chapter 5, verse 31, they experienced an amazing peace. I desire that peace. And this is my prayer for us this evening, that there is a God, when we cry to him, and when we establish him once again as the king of our hearts, he does not only become a mountain for us to run to. He does not only become a fountain we drink from. He does not only become a shadow we hide in. He does not only become a ransom for our imminent judgment, but he also become a source for our peace 
and rest. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord keep us. May the Lord comfort us with these words. Shalom and God bless you.